we just drove through one of our options. It was the $10 per night campground on BLM land and it was busy. There were tons and tons of cars parked all around with people either swimming in the river or cars with uh, trailers that brought boats and so it was just crazy busy and uh, there were a few sites available still but I don't know I wasn't really impressed it, it looked like the place is gonna be packed out on the weekend and to pay ten dollars for that I don't know it didn't seem worth it to me yeah I'd rather go check out a couple more places that are in the area yeah and if those are worse then we can come back here yeah True. So next we're gonna head into a boat launch and check that out and see if there's a good spot for us to park. There's a sign right there that says 14 day camping limit. All right, so well, let's look around and see if we can find a good site. So after looking around here a little bit at the boat launch, what is your opinion? I don't know. I'm not thrilled about this one either. I mean, it would do better, I think, than the $10 site but I would still keep looking for more options. Yeah, it just there's a, there's a few places that we could park, but it's basically on the side of the road where there's gonna be lots of um, traffic from the boat launch going past. And turning around and stuff. And it's not really that great of a place anyway. And there's a river, but it doesn't look like there's very good access from anywhere we would be able to park. So let's go check out another place yeah, let's just go. to see. Since there are so many options in this area, we might as well look. Well, this one looks definitely better. They got some fire rings, the river. I like it. I know. I like it better than any of the other places so far. Let's see, the sun is setting over there, so it's gonna be mostly coming up through that way. So really none of these have shaded areas. So upon further inspection, we decided that this particular boondocking place is going to be too exposed to the sun. And we wanted to be able to spend a couple days here and be able to have some time outside. And it just seems like there could be a better place to stay. So we're gonna go down the road a little bit and see if we can find another location. Oh, I do see a forklift. I see. We could just park like right there. Oh, what do you think about this? I think it looks pretty really nice. What do you think about it, Sammy? Um, it has gravel that the construction. Uh, and there is some dirt up on that yeah. hill. Yeah, you're looking for something to play in. They said this looked good. Yeah, he thinks it looks good. Do you think it looks good? Yeah. They was doing a good job driving. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you he so. was. <laughs> Level enough anyway. So everything looks good. Now we can set everything up and put out the slides. Yep, and look at that. The kids are already having fun. <laughs> Wasting no time at all. <laughs> oh, this is a much better spot to be. I'm really glad we moved. Because tomorrow, when we're spending a whole day, you know, it's gonna be much more pleasant and the kids have room to play and it looks like we're getting more neighbors too. The 
how do you like our boondock inside? I think it's really <laughs> great. You know, it's not it's not like the best view ever, but it's somewhat secluded and there's a river. And shade. Yeah. And That's shade. important in this weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it's, you know, it's upper 90s here uh, temperature wise, so having shade is really important because the RV just heats up real fast in the sun. Yeah, like see that other boondocking location had absolutely no shade and so we'd have to basically run the AC the whole day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for with, really to make a difference. Right, which would cost a lot in gas and would be noisy and unpleasant. Whereas it seems like here we'll be able to get away with minimal use of AC, which is really nice. and. That's important for a boondocking site. This is, for this weather, this is much better site just because of the trees. I think we got a pretty good boondocking site. And it's good because we wanted to spend a couple nights here. So we wanted to, we wanted to spend all day tomorrow so that we could have a break because this is the fourth day of driving. Catch up on some work and let the kids have a break from being in the car and play in the car seats yeah, and play. We play outside. That's why we were so particular about what it looked like and whether it had shade or not right. because we wanted it to be a good place to relax. Right. If it was just an overnighter then we probably would have stayed at that first place we saw. Yeah. Because it wouldn't matter then so much. But since we were planning on staying a whole day, we had to take into consideration the sun situation all throughout the day and mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we chose well. Our first boondocking experience was actually in Idaho a year ago. Last year we went for our long trip. It was our first long trip. Mm -hmm. By long, I mean we were gone for almost two months. Like a month and a half. A month and a half. Wait, it was a month and a half. It was a long. It was the longest trip we took. And uh, so when we were planning the trip, we were thinking, okay, we are gonna try boondocking just because we wanted to save money since it was a long trip, and we also wanted to experience some of the coolness of boondocking, you know? And There's re really nothing to it. I mean, it's just <laughs> basically camping, but you have a motorhome or but, RV, you know? Well, John says so. there's nothing to it. I would beg to differ. <laughs> you know, before we went on our trip, I, like... Um, wanted to be prepared uh, so I watched a lot of YouTube videos about boondocking and you know all the stuff you should have and like everything I could learn <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about boondocking yeah. and I mean a lot of it was helpful mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it also built it up in my mind to where it became that thing yeah. that we had to like try for and had to be the, the you know, we like had to set it up perfectly. Yeah. And, you know, we used to go backpacking. Mm -hmm. So we used to, you know, bring our tent with us on our backs. And we used to hike in for miles and bring all our food. And right. we'd have to boil our water from the stream. And that was way more rustic than anything we're experiencing here. I mean, this is luxury <laughs> right but it kind of in a way you know boondocking is kind of like a little bit like backpacking so you rely on everything that your motorhome has mm -hmm. and so back to last year you know so i felt like before we boondock before we decided that this is the day when we boondock we had to like fill up our water and dump our things <laughs> right. and, you know have all these things perfectly prepared mm -hmm. and so you know it was hard to do that it was hard to just finally decide today is the day and so as we were starting to go on a trip every night we'd end up staying at the campground you know, we didn't always stay at the full rv hookup but we'd stay like at the forest campground or something or whatever and so i don't know how long it would have taken me to be ready to try it yeah we were kind of forced to <laughs> yeah because we the, the place we were headed for didn't have any room for us and so 
there was some festival going on right. that we didn't know about, and so yeah. Yeah, it was all booked up, so we had to go find a, a place to dry camp. And it was like there was no way to avoid it. Mm -hmm. The kids both were tired and they were fussy and crying, so there was no no possibility of us just going farther out. And so we went. The guy at the at the RV park told John where we could head out that there was a boondocking spot really close by so we went there and i was like oh no, we're not prepared <laughs> and we had to boondock anyway our water wasn't filled up we didn't fill up our water mm -hmm. our propane was low i think it just mm -hmm. i felt like we we're gonna oh no you know one of the rules of boondocking is be prepared and so you know have your tank filled and your gray and black tanks dumped and have full propane you know all these things they're supposed to do and we were like not prepared at all and here we had to do it there was no other option but you know in the end it really worked out well <laughs> it was a good experience yeah. and i guess i'm glad looking back i'm really glad we just had to do it yeah yeah because it's a lot more fun boondocking than it is staying in rv parks for us, anyway. Uh, For some us. People... Other people might have some other opinion about it. You know. Right. Full hookups is also really good. But if you want to be out there, you know, closer to nature, mm -hmm. then this is the way to go. Right. We had, on our last trip, we had some really cool places that we stayed that were boondocking locations that otherwise we couldn't have done. Yeah. Like one of my favorite ones was in outside of the Grand Teton National Park. Oh yeah. And so you know it's like we <laughs> we faced our door towards the view, and so I would sit on the couch and through the dinette window in the door I could just see the mountains. And it was like whoa! You, know, you can't get that kind of view at the campground. What was your favorite one? I think probably. Um, the Badlands oh, yeah. National Park in South it, Dakota. Yeah, we were just right outside the entrance again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we were we were right outside the park. Yeah, and then so it was free to stay there, and we mm -hmm. had bighorn sheep coming up, <laughs> and and you know basically out of our windows we could see the whole stretch of the park. Just we were above it slightly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we were out there in a thunderstorm out there on the prairie. It was <laughs> that pretty, was a little nerve wracking. Pretty amazing. <laughs> we're it was so and windy. Walking. It was so windy. We had to put the slide in because the awning on the slide was gonna uh -huh. making us nervous. We thought it was gonna rip it off. Well, you know, that's all part of the experience, <laughs> right? And then not to forget. Um, that it also make it made it possible for us to do um high mountain camping like we were just off of a pass mm -hmm. in, in bighorn mountains oh yeah that was another one of my favorites and that was really cool yeah. too mm -hmm. it like, was very secluded and it just felt like you were just out there in the wilderness mm -hmm. It's just, you know, those kinds of things. I mean, there's always a trade-off. You can stay at, stay at an RV park with all the luxuries, mm -hmm. but then, you know, you kind of give up the nature part of it. Yeah. Then you could stay at a state park, so you get the hookups, some of them anyway, some of the amenities, but, you know, you don't have the full like RV park service but you get some of the nature too mm -hmm. then you have forest campgrounds where like usually have no hookups at all and you get but you still get like a um, a fire ring and you get a table a picnic mm -hmm. table and your spot to park in mm -hmm. and then there's boondocking where you have no amenities at all most of the time or sometimes there's a toilet pit yeah. toilet or some water or sometimes there's none nothing at all but you get most of the time a lot of the time i guess you'll get a cool view or you know a kind of experience you, yeah. you don't you don't get at any other location so anyway 
we're glad we're boondocking and we're gonna keep trying to do that as much as we can on this trip and if you're one of these people that would like to try it but haven't yet just go for it you know there's just no other way around it you you can watch as many videos as you want about it read as many articles as you want but until you actually experience it and do it you won't know what it's like yeah it's worth a try you know <laughs> and it's really not that complicated either yeah it's a little bit complicated <laughs> some people like to make it sound <laughs> some people Hey, now I know it's not really complicated. <laughs> and then we're less. <laughs> no, but it is always a good idea to have your water full, tanks empty, and, you know, propane filled up and all that. It mm -hmm. makes life easier. Yes. <laughs> but if you're just doing it for a day, then don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you should probably listen to Johnny's. <laughs> anyway, you guys... Our kids are in bed, we're gonna do some work before bedtime and then we'll see you later. Yeah, bye guys. Bye.